it. We're back with Master Chief Ken Fish of the United States Coast Guard. Well, uh, could you give us an idea, sir, of what a normal day's caseload might be, but normal for you in the sense of a bad weather day, such as last Memorial Day? Well, on Memorial Day, uh, between San Diego and Point Conception, uh, Southern California, we prosecuted about 31 uh, separate cases. Uh, by prosecute, do you mean? Prosecute uh, worked or uh -huh. responded to calls for assistance. I thought they were drug smugglers <laughs> or something, you know. Well, we do that too. Quite a bit. <laughs> uh, within those 31 cases, 18 of those were disabled vessels. Two of those, I believe, were hoaxes. We had uh, one man overboard and uh, two capsizings and several other. Uh, other conditions. I understand they had, I was monitoring the radio and they had a ship named Popeye. It was a large sailing vessel with a small engine not strong enough to push the boat through the wind or against the wind and they were being blown backwards. Right. He, uh, he could uh -huh. found himself in weather that he wasn't prepared for nor experienced for and uh, Murphy's Law, one thing led to another. Uh, he ended up with uh, un being able, able to stem the tide so to speak. He, he couldn't handle the winds that prevailed. His small engine wouldn't do the job and they eventually tore his sails as well. Mm. And uh, he pretty much had to throw his hands up in the air and call for help. <laughs> <laughs> and usually by the time they call for help, it's long overdue. Yes, sir, it is. It, uh, it, a lot of times if they would call initially, we can sometimes give them advice ahead of time and lessen the degree of uh, mm -hmm. Distress. I did hear one call that day also where people were trying to get into the harbor and there were, I don't know, I believe eight foot waves or something. Seas were about eight feet. And uh, I heard the Coast Guard telling them, well, when the wave comes at you, aim up into it about a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. And then when you're on top, fall off and try to make it in a little bit uh -huh. and keep doing that. And it's when the people are very tense and nervous, it seems hard for them to comprehend what they're doing. They should seek out training, what have you, prior. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, when the weather builds, the sea can be unforgiving, uh, as particularly around an inlet uh, such as Channel Islands, Ventura. Uh, the swells build rapidly. Uh, an inexperienced boater will find himself in an unfortunate circumstance real quickly. Uh, that's something we can't teach them over the radio very well, how to maneuver their boat. It's, too, it's usually late by that time. Uh, they should not find, put themselves in the predicament to begin with. But if they find themselves there, which can happen, as you can tell, the wind is building today, which living here, we know this is normal. Uh -huh. the, the haze burn off, right. we have beautiful sunshine in the afternoon, right. and a little breeze. But uh, if you're not familiar with the weather patterns, and even if the predominant weather patterns can change real fast. Mm -hmm. So where could someone get a little, little additional meteorology training, perhaps? Uh, they can take courses through the Coast Guard Auxiliary, and their local power squadron. They all have basic boating courses, which include uh, meteorology training, weather training. And do you have another incident on that day that we were talking about, uh, bay liner, I believe? Uh, we had a 22-foot bay liner that uh, ventured out early that morning. Uh, there was five people on board. They uh, were off of uh, Point Magoo Rock. Uh, the day started out pretty routinely for them, uh, going out to have a good time. The well, they're built on them. The uh, wind picked up from 47 knots constant to 54 knot gusts. In uh, miles per hour, could you explain to our non-boating viewers about what that would be? Okay, uh, uh, 54 knot gust is probably around 49 miles an hour. That's quite a bit of wind. That's out moving there. along. That's no close trees, to, no trees to break it down. That's correct, and that's close to hurricane strength. Um, they found themselves in 25 foot seas in a 22 foot boat. Uh, to worsen their predicament, they lost power to their engine. Uh, and in an effort to restart the engine, they drained a battery, which left them with no communications. Uh, the, a passing fishing vessel did, however, come by and give assistance. They stood by, relayed uh, the distress to the Coast Guard, which enabled us to respond. Uh, we were unable to get the people off initially because we felt it was too dangerous at the time. Uh, due to the sea conditions, so we put a man aboard ourselves, put the vessel in tow. However, once night fell, uh, the uh, weather built, and uh, the boat began to take on water and break apart. So we had no choice but to go alongside and try to pull the people up. 
Uh, one man did go in the water and we retrieved him safely. Uh, so it was an unfortunate outcome in this case. Well, it's, it, you sure can get in trouble quick out there and it pays to be as experienced as you can be. I suggest to people before they buy a boat to get training, but you and I both know it works in the reverse. They buy the boat, they're out there every weekend at the islands, and then they go for training. And that's what we'll be talking about in later shows, Power Squadron Coast Guard Zoe. I thank you. This is Captain's Log. We'll be back with Sea Tales next. <laughs>